Are you looking for a repricer that will make your Amazon repricing easier and more efficient? Then you might want to check out Seller Toolkit's new repricer, which I'm going to share with you in this video and give you a complete walkthrough of our repricer, which has totally changed the repricing game. Stay tuned. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon now doing the online arbitrage business model for the last four years. Now, I post videos about selling on Amazon and specifically the online arbitrage model that I do every single week. Now, if you are interested about this kind of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel so you will get notified about everything I'm doing to help you grow your business. But hey, enough about me. What are we going to talk through today? So first things first, I'll give you a quick rundown or a background into why we're doing this or the introduction. Number two, I'll talk about why it's important to have a repricer. Number three, I'll talk about what is repricing software. Number four, I'll give you that complete walkthrough. I'll set a toolkit and we'll jump on my computer and I'll show you it live and in one of my accounts that I have. And finally, number five, I'll give you some top tips and tricks that are just going to help you out. There is a saying that I really believe in, any fool can make something complicated, but it takes a genius to make it simple. Now with that, I've come to ponder the question, how can we make our task simpler and make it more efficient? So following on from that, we've been using a bit of software called Seller Toolkit or STK as a profit analysis software, but recently they have introduced a repricer and for us, we wanted to take the opportunity to test in our business if this is going to help our business be not only more profitable, but also, well, simpler. Because, my God, that is what we're all looking for. Now, that is why in this video, I'm going to share with you our experience with the new Seller Toolkit repricer. And hopefully this will help you in the case if you are deciding maybe to transition over or thinking about changing or trying a new repricer. And obviously my experience is going to share with that as well. Now, you might want to be asking why we changed the repricer. Well, to answer that, since we've already used Seller Toolkit in terms of the profit and loss reporting, you know, the P&L analysis, we thought it'd also be a great opportunity to test out and to try the repricer to see, you know, because our inventory and sales are already in FTK software, meaning that all our data is just stored in one place, which makes it so much easier for my team to just manage. Now you might ask why? Well, because my team and in particular my admin VA, she has to go through a long process before she gets to input even the minimum maximum prices on our previous repricer. So i.e. like downloading a repricing file or, and then setting it right and then updating it into the repricing system and so on and so on. It just creates more administration. Now the move over to the repricer or, or trying out SDK's repricer is not just to lessen the tasks of my my VA, but also to minimize issues with maybe sudden drops of prices and, and also things like changing the cost of goods and making sure that always you know, there aren't human errors in there, like we always get it right. So hence, we wanted to try another repricer, which perhaps maybe could be more effective. Now, in addition to creating a video about my experience with the SDK repricer, I also asked the YouTube community, and that's you guys, 47 respondents, 89% of the respondents came back with a yes, we'd like to see a video about SDK repricer. That is something which just told me this is the video we need to make. Let's get a chance and create this video today and share with you what we're actually learned and what's going on. Now that leads me nicely onto number two, why is it important? Well, you might be asking the question, why is repricing a big deal on Amazon or should we say for Amazon sellers? Well, basically Amazon sellers are just constantly adjusting their prices to win the buy box. Now that buy box is where 90% of all the sales come from on Amazon. Now, if you want to learn more about the buy box, watch this video that I created called Top Amazon Buy Box Strategies and I'll drop a link up there. It's going to help you learn about how to win the Amazon buy box. Trust me, super important and you need to know this. So that leads me nicely on to number three, what is repricing software? This allows a seller to lower or raise their inventory prices instantaneously or within about 15 minutes and automatically as well in accordance with predetermined pricing strategies, i.e. repricer rules. So the best way to think about it is repricing software is like a balancing act. If you don't want to cut into your profit margin with products, or perhaps maybe you're missing out on sales because you need to reduce your price down by a few pennies or a few cents, then repricing software is going to just change that and it's going to get your products selling, but also as well trying to maximize your margin by making sure that you're getting the most amount of profit wherever possible. Quick question for you guys. Do you use repricing software? Let me know down in the comments below. Just 
a yes or no. And hey, if you want to drop down what you're currently using, I'd be interested to know what my YouTube community are currently using. Right, this now leads me on to chapter number four, the complete walkthrough. And I know this is the bit you really wanted. First things first, Seller Toolkit 3 Pricer automatically takes care of Amazon fee changes, i.e. VAT, ENF, and other fees when selling across European marketplaces. Since Amazon, it was always changing the fees at any time, and you know, they have updates every single year, I meaning you could be losing money when you're not even noticing it. And that is where SDK3 pricing comes into action, and it will automatically adjust your prices depending on the market pace and the fee structure coming in. Now, secondly, it also supports various changes of prices when your cost of goods prices change as well. So it's just gonna be easier for you that you've no longer gotta like change your cost of goods listing and then update the, the min prices. You set rules based off the cost of goods. So if you just change the cost of goods, your min pricing or however your repricer works will change automatically. Now, lastly, the third one, the seller toolkit, the pricer keeps track of your sales. So it knows when you have sold out of an item, so that say, for example, you bought it at 11 pound and it now reprices the item based on your new purchase price of say 11.99, and it just makes your repricing game so much more efficient. But I do have an affiliate link, which gives you a 14 day free trial and 30% off. I'll drop a link in the comments down below. Do check that out. Obviously, it's just going to give you a chance to use this software. So let's jump now onto the computer and give you that full walkthrough of the SDK Seller Toolkit Repricer. Okay, so we've just logged into um, Seller Toolkit here. Now, the, the first thing which I'll say is obviously just remember this isn't just a repricer, it does your like cost of goods, it, it does your, your profit and loss, and it does other, lots of other stuff as well, such as like inventory management, inventory reclaimed, which a lot of people charge a percentage for. This is just a fixed price which is all part of the package. Now, I, I just logged into my Amazon USA account here and you can see, you know, it's only eight o'clock in the morning and we've made one sale and then, well, hey, but it's all right. You can see from definitely down the graph here, we've got lots of sales going on. Recently, some new stocks in, I am excited. So getting there, definitely. But this isn't about the profit side, this is about the repricer. So let's kind of go into that now and give you a walkthrough. So let's jump down over to here to, we've got repricer, let's click on that and do repricing dashboard. So you can see here, just in my USA account right now, we've got uh, 101 products, or should we say active, in our inventory, of which 101 are currently being repriced. It says we've got 13 at minimum, zero at maximum, six on the buy box, so not many at the moment actually, uh, or should say winning the buy box, and then 48 matching the buy box. So pretty much half of my inventory is kind of like on the buy box price and it will kind of rotate round, but right now we are winning six of them. So we'll see how it goes. Obviously it's about getting the sales on in Amazon with these products. And this is just a brand new account we've created selling in the USA. Now, the one thing which I will also say is down here, you can see what kind of price change history. So you can see like dates, what the date and time has happened, what's happened, the type of reprice, and then also like the rules are like, we've got 100 match buy box, that's fine. And then also the name, you know, marketplace, name of the product, We've got the buy box price and all the kind of information about it. And then also what's happened to our price of the change. So we can see here, like this one's gone down 7p, this one's gone up 36p. Um, and then it's just got here, what's going on to so like the fees, cost of goods, profit, ROI margins. So you can see we've got, interesting, even in my US, we've got some products where we are literally about to sell out or sell very low price because we probably just want to clear those items down as part of all the strategies we do. If we hold it for too long, we will just clear it out. So not the highest up margins right now on them. The ROIs are okay for some of them, but definitely an option something you can look at. Okay, so let's go over now to our repricing rules. And we've got certain rules set up here. And what I'll do is some slightly blurred out. Why? Because they are repricing strategies. They are how we're running our business. And it's about unique to you. But obviously, if you know how I reprice all my rules, then obviously you can compete against me very well. So we will hide some of the things, but obviously try and give you as much information as just the certain numbers that we operate to. What you generally have is you'll have one rule, which is your main master rule. And then what you can do is you can move between rules manually or even automatically through automations if you want based on you know criteria and for us generally speaking those the, the reason we move between should we say one rule and the next rule and the next one 
will be about inventory age. Why our model is very much about fast selling items. If we have a product too old, we just want to start getting it cleared down, shifted. That's super important for us. So you can see here, like just at the top, we've got our main rule. We call it 100 max buy box. STK using the rule 360 uh, or SKU, should we say. We've got zero match buy box, that's STK using the rule. And then we've got aggressive old stocks. So generally kind of like the strategies that we look at and the way we work. And each of the rules kind of just explain very easily what they actually do. Um, so very interesting there. It kind of gives you a real quick overview of how that rule operates and what's the operation behind it. So if we jump into one of the rules, we come into one of the rule things, but if what you can do is you can understand along the top, it's got this like tab navigation. And as you go through and you change the rule, this kind of right hand side here explanation of what it does will update on the go live. So it just really explains to you how this rule works. So something really helpful there. So we have like details, you know, when you want to match an offer, how does it operate? And you can do like here kind of like the prime offer of what you want to set it to. You can talk about your minimums, your maximums, your automation, for example, if you want to change between different rules and how that works. You've got maybe there's certain sellers that you don't want to compete against. Maybe like, hey, I like that Tom, I never want to compete against him. I'm not going to compete against that seller. Up to you. But also maybe you want to compete against certainly just one other seller on the listing. You can always find that. Maybe a different kind of rule. That's what you can do. Um, maybe dealing with only prime sellers or how you want to deal with suppressed buy box. We also have like snoozing, so how you want to snooze. And then also you can do bulk changes. So maybe there's certain ASINs you want to move onto a rule today, not just one or two, but a lot of them. This is the way you want to use it. So a really easy way to set up the rules, but also where it gives you that live running commentary. If I give you an example, I don't know, let's go to prime sellers. If I go here, change, go to maximum price, what you're going to notice is just down here, it says only prime sellers go to maximum. And if I change it, go to minimum, there we go, it says go to minimum. So as we have that, that process, we're updating it, we can see that that kind of explanation of what the price is going to do will update as we go. But really useful, really easy and helps you understand. Now, one of the big problems we had before was about we had to kind of take our cost of goods, work out the minimum price or a set price, and then create a, a repricing file and upload that to our repricer. Now that was just actually a pain. It was a real pain and you had to get the calculations right. And if the fee structure changes, then you have to recalculate what the profit should be. It was just a bit of a nightmare. And you know what? We just don't do that anymore. In Seller Toolkit, they, because they know the cost of goods, they will automatically calculate all the, you know, the, we put in the cost of goods plus, plus our prep fees, and then they will do everything else off that. So it just makes it super simple. So we have no need to create a repricing file anymore. We literally create the repricing automatically off the cost of goods, which we're uploading because it's our profit and loss software already. So it's going to be so helpful in regard to that. But what I will show you is if I jump in now into an inventory product, and then what I can do is show you how that kind of operates and how what it does and how it reprices using the cost of goods. So let's just jump in now into the inventory and we can see that. So if I jump over up here over to the inventory and let's just choose an item, for example. So what I can do is just come up here and do expand pricing changes. And what I can see is this product, we it already knows our cost of goods, $8.65. But I can see a history of that product right here of you know the rule, the price, the change, what happened, pretty much the same. And then also like the margin. So what is happening there? So that price change history. So I can kind of go through and you can see this has really had very little changes apart from like here where it's had a couple up and down. But that's pretty much it. It allows you to see those changes and I don't have to worry about creating the price. It will just do it automatically because it knows the cost of goods. The other one you might want to consider is if you do need to upload, obviously it does have the functionality to upload a big file. You can definitely do that. And if you want to filter through, maybe like your reprices, just looking at like what's going on with your products, you can come over to repricing filters and actually filter through and just see what listings where they are. So maybe you want to like, I don't know, like change the prices or something, move them to a different rule manually. The repricing filters help with understanding where you're at. For us, you know, right now in the US, about 100 in the UK, we're probably like 600 SKUs. So that just makes it a lot easier for us to really identify. And you can see here, like this product, we can really come in and just literally change you know, the rules that we're on and see how it's going to affect like what's going on. And we can do a bit of a manual calculation if we want. So, or even turn off the repricing. So lots of options there to control what is going on with your repricer. 
Okay, guys, so I'm talking about repricing, and I talked about it actually earlier. Any fool can make something complicated, but it takes an intelligent person to keep it simple. And I'm a big believer in keeping things simple. One of the big things that I've really learned across my Amazon journey the last four years, and in the UK, we've really done a million a year today, is building a team so, so important. Why? Because you cannot do this work on your own. Repricing rules, checking the repricing, doing that. It just takes a team to help you manage all these processes. Software is amazing and it does help you. I promise you that it helps speed up. But in the, the day, it still needs a human touch, it needs a human intervention, and having a team is going to help you do more and just make your life simpler. So, what do I recommend? If you are looking at building a team, first things you should always start with, and I say this honestly, is the fact that it should be a sourcing VA. Not admin, not purchasing, but sourcing VA. Why? Because a sourcing VA will find you more products to buy, to resell, to make profit. They add value to your business. Whereas an admin VA and even a purchasing manager don't directly bring more value in, they're not finding new opportunities for your investments to grow. So sourcing VA should be the first thing that you should grow into and build with your business. And if you are looking, thinking about building a team and want a sourcing VA, then look no further than the Fast Track FBA VA Academy, the service I created whereby we find, hire, train, and support you with your VA for 12 weeks. Any problems, you come straight back to us and we'll resolve them. Do not worry. Now, if you want to know more and if you want to book in a free 30-minute consultation call, have a look down below. I'll drop a link to our website, yourfasttrackfba.com slash VA. You can book in a free 30-minute consultation call and also understand everything about the business. But trust me, it's a game changer. All these things just help you build a proper business and make your life so much easier. Right, this leads me nicely on to number five, my top tip for you. Look, first things first, what I will say is that when you're choosing repricing software, make sure it's integrated with the tools that you use, i.e. You know, regularly I'm using like Seller Toolkit for my profit and loss, so the data is already stored in the software, which just makes inputting of like everything else so much simpler because the data is already there and I can see that happening. Now, the second thing I would say is your chosen repricer must be equipped to make a adjustments to, should we say, the repricing rules based on competition and scenarios. So therefore, it's got to be quick, effective, but also since the main price of the repricing software is to outperform your competitors, capture you more buy box and to maximize the margin on every sale, just make sure it has the good functionality or the best functionality to allow you to control that versus your competitors. And if your repricer fails, then do you know what's gonna happen? You are gonna be losing money. Trust me, they are their, they are worth their weight in gold. Now, this leads me nicely onto my top tip when using a repricer. What do I recommend and what do we do in our business? Regularly monitoring old stock. Now, if your old stock, generally speaking, is over about 90 days, might wanna be reviewing that product, maybe in your seller central or your repricer or even FTK, because what you're gonna be thinking about is if you're wanting to make a change to that price, get that product sold, using your repricer. For us, we have like an aggressive rule. That's what we use because we just want to get those products cleared. Now, interestingly enough, or maybe Amazon's come on that's, you know, and you want to drop the price because there's just too much competition. Now, why do I say 90 days? Well, recently, something came in about the restock limits. And generally speaking, in the UK, and it's about, it's about 90 days as well in the US, whereby you want to be holding that 90 days worth of stock. That is it. So 90 days is the figure that I use just in regards to the new restock limits. Now, what I will say is that after watching you know, this, the complete walkthrough of the Seller Toolkit Repricer, you might want to consider watching a video I created called Eight Ways to Deal with Slow Sales. Repricers are amazing, but also as well, sometimes dealing with slow sales can be super important. I'll drop a link to the video around here, about eight ways to deal with slow sales. Check it out. I think you're going to love it. But hey, hopefully you've liked this video. If you have, give me a big thumbs up. And hey, if you want to see more videos like this, do hit that subscribe button down below. But for me, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.